Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I see that you are joining. Awesome. Okay, so hello. Thank you so much. My name is Carla Plasencia, and on behalf of the student world, I welcome you to this amazing live session that we have today. Okay, so now I will introduce you to our presenters for today. They are Catherine and Sue. They are coming from the Academy of Art University, and they will show us all the amazing opportunities that they have for you. Thank you so much for being here, and the stage is all yours. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Sue Raleigh. I'm the uh, Executive Vice President at the University. And my colleague, Catherine Tate, is the Executive Director of Animation. So we're going to try to give you some good information about the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. Um, and I, <clears throat> Carla, if I want to move the slide, do you move it or do I move it? You have the power to control them. Just click on the arrows on the keyboard and that should be fine. Okay, I am trying to do that right now. Or if you click on the presentation directly, you can also control it from there. Okay. All right, well, let's... Um, now, are you seeing my slides or are you just seeing the picture? The, the picture. Okay, good. Um, all right, so first of all, I just want to say that San Francisco is a wonderful, wonderful place to do the visual arts. Um, as you can see, we really do have the, that's the Golden Gate Bridge, and that's the city behind us, which is uh, quite amazing, actually. And if you haven't been to San Francisco, you should check it out. Um, we also have, whoops, we have hills, we have cable cars. Um, that's the bay there. So um, you can see. It's a, it's a great place to be in the visual arts. And I wanna, but there's more about than, than just the, the beautiful natural scenery. Um, the school was founded in 1929, as you can see on the slide. And we were right in the middle of so many studios, companies, all, of, all about art and design. It truly is a hub, it's, it's a, a place where you will have so many opportunities to have internships, meet amazing instructors that are te working at these companies. It's a wonderful way to get connected. We also have accreditation. And, and for any of you who are thinking about going to school outside of your country, um, it's important for you to think about this. Accreditation is where sometimes it's government, sometimes it's peers come and they review the work that your university is doing and decide, in fact, if they can recommend you. If they do, you become accredited. And you can see that we have regional accreditation. That's the WASC accreditation. We have national accreditation, which is the National Association of Schools of Art and Design. And we have specific accreditations when it's possible. Uh, for example, CETA, which is the Council for Interior uh, Architecture and Design. And then we have NAB, which is also uh, specific. And that's all about architecture. We have a lot of degrees. We have 22 schools, 122 accredited degrees and programs. And why so many? Well, the reason we have so many is because we can blend, we can tailor make your curriculum. So when you come to us, for example, you may say to Catherine, I, I would like to do animation, but I also would like to draw more. And Catherine can look at that and say, sure, we can put you, we can have you take some illustration courses or we can take, have you take some fine art courses. Or you might say to Catherine, I want to be in animation, but also with interested in games. And she can look at that and put something together that'll work just for you.
We also have STEM, and some of you may know what that means. It stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. But for us, because so many of our majors are involved with the computer, we've been able to designate 15 different STEM degree programs. And, and the good news for you with that is that means you can work for three years after graduation in the US. You don't have to get a special, a new, a new special uh, visa or uh, try to get permission. It's granted automatically. So now I'm going to go quickly through um, just some of the student work that you might be interested in seeing, because it really is an art and design all about the work. Um, what you're looking at right now is architecture. Fashion design, we do not only, um, we don't, we make the clothes, we design the textiles, we have knitwear, um, you name it, styling, it's all in, under fashion design. And part of what we do is also metal arts jewelry. Now, some schools will combine uh, jewelry and fashion design we have them as a standalones, but that doesn't mean that you can't make really beautiful jewelry for the fashion shows or for fashion students who may need that perfect accessory. We have photography, very popular. We all have cameras on our phones and we carry them around, take pictures of everything. But these pictures I think show that it's not always just about taking a picture. Sometimes it's about taking a beautiful picture, uh, creating an image that people remember. And we'll show you how to do that. Advertising. <coughs> Everybody knows that advertising is really where you're trying to sell somebody a product. But it also can be getting a message across. In this case, an international student had uh, very strong feelings about the idea of ecology and the plastics in the ocean. She created this as part of a campaign to get people to think about throwing their bottles into the water or leaving them on the beach. Student world, and this is all about um, game design. And you probably recognize some of these titles, Tomb Raider, uh, League of Legends, Gears of War, these are all games that our students have worked on. And you'll be you'll not only be working on other people's games, but you'll have the opportunity to create your own. And maybe that's something that really get you, gets you excited and we can help you do that. Catherine, I'm gonna let you talk a little bit about, and we're getting into the animation world here. Why don't you talk a little bit about the traditional or 2D side? Sure. So, hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, it takes an army to make a movie, and um, we do train people in all aspects of movie making, including post-production and visual development, um, which is pre-production. Uh, any movie needs a design for the characters and the environments, and so visual development allows you to be in the very beginning of the pipeline where you actually design the characters, uh, decide how, what clothes they wear, how, what kind of um, emotional impact they might have. And um, that's a whole job in itself to be able to design these worlds for environments, for games, for um, TV shows, everything. Uh, maybe, uh, you might notice here that these are hand-drawn uh, rather than 3D. I mean, everything's done in the computer now, but uh, we have a large 2D department, traditional animation department that teaches you how to, uh, to create a 2D world. And then here we have 3D animation uh, and visual effects, which is a whole pipeline. So an animator would move a character, bring it to life. Uh, the the visual development person would design the character um, and and then you would actually move the character and create the film. So there's many, many different jobs in that area. And it's very 
tangible getting a job in, in this industry it's booming right now with all the the streaming on um you know things like netflix and then also feature films and catherine um in even if you're doing the the 3d part of animation you still need to know a little bit about drawing isn't that true yeah and that's a, there's a few um major advantages to our school and one is that everybody gets training in basic um art and fine art and design and it's it's really just to train your eye to see what looks good and what works and what doesn't work and that applies to moving images as well so while you can focus on the career that you're you came to to you, know, you you're coming to us to learn um you can still get some extra skills that make you even better at what you do and we try to collaborate with with the different you know i collaborate with the different directors of different departments um one of our major major uh assets one of the best parts of our program is studio x where we actually bring you into a production environment and train you in a pipeline that mirrors the industry we work with filmmakers um we've worked with ryan kugler who directed black panther before he directed black panther he uh, worked with us on his first feature film, Fruitvale Station, and we were on set and we did the post-production visual effects. That's my background. Um, I worked at, uh, Lucas, uh, um, at Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic for um, over 11 years, um, compositing and working with visual effects. Um, we are in a hub of, of, like what Sue was saying, the companies that are near our school, I mean, we're in the middle of this, you know, of the Silicon Valley were tech companies like Google and Netflix and Apple, and they're all right there. We also have Pixar um, very close by and, and George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic and Lucasfilm and, and all of the games, everything under uh, Lucasfilm, a few miles away from us. So there's so much so much around us and we have those folks actually teaching for us we have special pixar classes classes that are taught by people who currently work at pixar um so you can work with the very very best of the industry um and be really close to a lot of these companies we also have really good relationships with companies in los angeles and in canada where we place students all the time um we have industry events where people from all the companies such as Disney um, and other companies come to our school and meet you and look at your work regularly. And, um, and then eventually place, hopefully you're placed in a company. Um, I'm really, really excited to say again, that, that it is reachable. It's a reachable goal to work on feature films. I've worked on over 80 feature films in my career and um I'm here to say that the work is there. So, um, and we're really excited about our studio program that trains you to work on feature films um, and animated shorts and animated films right here at the school, mirroring the industry and working with industry's professionals. So, um, so yeah. And, and we're gonna get we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Um, but I, I just wanted to show you guys that even as an animator, which we, we showed you one of the more polished pieces here, um, but you still need to have that, be able to do that storyboard. Um, and, and we're gonna show you how to do that as well. Also, you may notice on that CG image that uh, there's a, somebody who just does the lighting and the mood that sets the mood for the scene. So there's so many different jobs uh that that you know you know we, we wait we we kind of like to to have people find their passion we get you exposed to everything in the beginning so that you can get immersed in the different jobs and decide i really like lighting i really like making water and explosions i really like animating a character i really like making a skeleton in a character because i have i'm technical um, you know, a lot of this is a blend of technical and art. Um, and that's why it's so exciting for me personally. And why I got into this industry is I got to use both sides of my brain all the time. So um, it's it's great. And it's again, it's not just one job, it's many jobs. 
We're going to move on and then we'll come back and you can always ask Catherine questions in during the Q&A as well. Um, we also have something that's called industrial design. And what is that? Well, maybe you want to think about creating the next bus, a, a great bus or a train or a, a shoe. Um, this is where people come together and they create, make the world a little better place by the, they look at ergonomics, they look at design, all these things, or maybe you want to do a car. Um, actually, the director of that department is Tom Matano. And Tom, if you, if you know the two-seater Miata, he's a person who was the lead designer on that project. So he's considered an iconic designer and you'll work with Tom and Tom, just like with Catherine, uh, will give you their best tips for how to be successful. Or maybe you're interested in graphic design. Graphic design is kind of an interesting thing. You have a very small amount of space to tell somebody you should buy this, especially in a grocery store. You know, there's hundreds of products and or maybe thousands. I don't know. But but you can see here when you look at this label, the person designed the label, they picked the type, they picked the colors, they picked the images. So if you're into those kind of details, maybe you want to do a logo. I don't know. But that's what graphic designers do. I want to bring up illustration. Illustration is where you work for somebody and they have a problem. For example, I've written a children's book and I want a, I want a cover that's going to attract people to um, my book or I want to create the look of the characters. And you work with a, a illustrator and they send you images and then you say, well, um, I like her, but I like her eyes to be a little bluer and the illustrator uh, makes those changes. It's all done digitally right now. And, um, but it's something that you should think about if you really like drawing and you want to have not just drawing for your own interest, but also for, to solve someone else's problem. And part of that too is comic books. Um, Back in the day, when I read comic books, we didn't have the the intense, these are actually graphic novels almost, and you can see the images have been well thought out. Um, this is, again, illustration. We all know the fine artists. We go to the museums, we look at the beautiful paintings. These are paintings, these aren't photographs. Um, and if you're into that, if you want to paint, you want to sculpt, by the way, we have sculpture as well. They can be traditional or it can be a little more, well, we could, I guess you could say these are, are more conceptual. But um, we want to do sculpture, we can help you with that. And actually the students in our sculpture department have done projects for the city of San Francisco. One is a big one that they did out at the zoo. So you're, you're, the world is open to you if you want to be, do sculpture and you want to do public art. One of our other popular majors is interior architecture and design. And I always think of that as where you are taking the interiors, the place people go and you make them want to be there. You make it comfortable for them, uh, whether it's a, a dome on top of a roof or an interior, more traditional interior. This is a great, I, I, I love this image because uh, obviously there was a stairway and, um, you know, stairways can not be all that. They're functional, right? I go from one level to the next. But in this case, they took that space and made it a beautiful space, a space that draws your eye, a space that you're attracted to. That's what interiors, they do in our interior architecture and design. As Catherine was saying, we do everything we can at the school to connect you with the industry. Um, she mentioned several of the uh, groups that she works closely with in the Bay Area. But we also have every spring uh, what we call our spring show. The best work of all majors is shown and we try to put it under one roof. Um, we bring top industry representatives to the school. They will hire people on the spot um, because they know our students, when they graduate, not only do they have a competitive portfolio, but they're also ready to sit down in the chair or stand at the standing desk, whatever it is, and start working. They know how to use the tools. They know what the expectations are. Um, it makes it easy for the people who are hiring them to say, yes, this is where I want to go to get my future employees. 
you can see all these people uh, when we we have it on on site and when we have it on site we will um, you know talk to the the representatives individually sometimes spend time with them after the show um, do everything we can to in Increase their understanding of the Academy of Art. So what often comes up is, how are you ranked? You know, art and design is kind of a hard, hard uh, ranking. We don't have we, you know, it's nobody cares about how many books we have in our library, and they certainly don't care about our how many of our faculty are PhDs. So we may not have the same standards as other universities, but what we do, what we're very proud of, is how we do in global competitions. I want to underscore global. We don't just compete in competitions in the United States. We compete in competitions for, with schools all over the world. And you can see in many cases, we're ranked number one. Um, that's important because that means that we're not only um, competing and equal to, we're actually on top of the pile. So remember, um, when you look at rankings, you want to know about, you want to look at the work. That's the most important thing. It's all about the work. These are partnerships that we have with companies all over the world. Um, you can see um, there's quite a few that you've probably heard of. We've got Samsung, we've got Alfa Romero, we got Facebook, we, you name it. There's so many companies that we students work um, actually do internships while they're in school um, with these companies and then they frequently work in them after school after they're out of school but also we do collaborations and Catherine was talking about something that happens in her department called studio x where students come together and they create um, a film we work within these companies. Uh, we come up with design. They have a problem. They come to us. Students come together um, and they try to create a visual solution. So that's really great to have on your resume. And then if I can get this to come up here. Um, careers. Sa these same companies and others students are working at, alumni are working at. And I guarantee you, if you go to Walt Disney, for example, and you say, I, you know, I, I graduated from the Academy of Art. They're going to know the Academy of Art, and they're going to, you're going to have uh, a great um, advantage over students who don't have that in. Um, we at Pixar, I think, Catherine, over 10% of the studio is from the Academy of Art. Um, I'm not sure about the stats, but we, like I said, we have instructors from Pixar uh, teaching classes of different levels of animation. And, you know, often some of, you know, some of those students will get internships there because of the connections you make with these instructors. And again, our instructors in every one of our schools are, you know, a lot of them, like most of them are currently in the industry. And, and that is a huge amount of connections that you can make um while you're in school and and that's a you know again just having those industry professionals working with you is already starting your connections to get a job that's right it's almost like every class is a job interview so um and catherine she just led me right into the next slide you can see some of the people that we have as department director catherine's on there um these are outstanding professionals who have been successful in the field. They, they are who you want to become and they can share their experience and expertise with you so that you can have um, a great life in whatever it is that you want to do. We also have support services. So I know that for some of you, um, English is not your first language. We have all kinds of, um, arts, English support, we call it English for art purposes. Um, we look at what your, what are the most important parts of the language that you need to use in the classroom. Um, and we work with you on that. <coughs> we also give you support throughout the time you're at the university if you need it. That's all part of your tuition. Uh, we also have clubs. Um, we have 
Catherine's here, the anime club, for example. Uh, you want to talk about the anime club, what that is? Um, well, if you're interested in anime, then you join the club. Um, uh, we also have a, another animation club called Tea Time, which, um, you know, it it's huge. And every Friday they meet and they look at your work and they bring in guest speakers at these clubs from the industry to give you, to coach you on and answer your questions. So it's definitely a way we, we have a strong community in our clubs and it's where you can be around people who are loving the same stuff you are and, and you know, connecting with the industry and each other. And we also speaking of, um, connecting and I'm trying to go to my next slide. I'm having a little trouble here. Sorry. So we also have housing and I really recommend if you're thinking about coming to San Francisco, that's great. Um, we, it's kind of daunting to come to a new country, a new city and try to find a place to live, especially in a city as popular as San Francisco. So we, I recommend that you look at our housing for the first year. You don't have to stay there the whole time you're at the academy, but um, it's a great way to meet others that are sharing your passion, that share um, your desire to be a professional artist and designer. Um, start networking on day one. It can't network enough. And our dorms aren't like the typical dorm that you may have seen in the past. We have old mansions. We have uh, hotels. Um, we have a lot of really interesting buildings. We have an indoor swimming pool in one of them. So um, the other thing is we have a shuttle service that connects you to all of your classrooms. So you don't have to think about how do I get from where I live to where I study. We will take you there. You can go back and forth as many times as you want in the course of a day. Uh, or if you want to go and um, just hang out at a building near uh the classrooms, you can do that too. All you have to do is show your ID and you're all set. So the question always comes up, well, that all sounds great. I love the idea of being in San Francisco, but is it worth it? Well, I, this is what I think. First of all, everything has a price. And if you're going to go to college, you know, that you're going to have to, you're going to have to pay something, but what are you going to get in return? What is the value? Um, we're telling you that if you follow this recipe, if you follow uh, the setup that we have for you at the Academy of Art, you can get a job doing what you love to do in a company, in a studio. You can make good salary. You don't have to worry about being a starving artist. Um, and that means everything, and especially to your parents too. Um, they want to know that when you graduate from college, um, you're going to be able to take care of yourself and you're going to be able to have a life like they have. We charge for uh, per academic year a little over 32,000 US dollars. That's your application fees, that's your activity fees, that's your health insurance, um, and it's estimating also what your supply fees will be. But having said that, um, that is not um, as high as some of the art and design schools that you'll see when you when you look at the United States or anywhere in the world. And I think what you're getting for your money is huge. It's priceless. It's beyond. Um, I mean, think about it. If somebody comes up to you today and says, listen, if you go here, I can guarantee you're going to have a competitive portfolio and you're going to be connected with industry professionals, they're gonna know who you are and you're gonna be able to start working right after graduation. That's pretty, pretty impressive. So, um, you know, yes, there is a cost, but that cost is uh, reasonable. And I think what you're gonna get out of it is well worth um, the money that you'll spend. So having said all of that, um, there is, this is, this is how you can apply, but I want to show you a, a quick film. Carla, can you, can you run the, um, the film that shows the student work? This is something we put together to sort of give you a sense of it all.
Thank you. Um, and, you know, the reason we say congratulations is because we know it takes a lot of courage to even come to a webinar like this and be serious enough to really look into turning um, your life into a dream that you have probably had for a very, very long time. Um, and I know Catherine has also a video that she likes to show people. And um, I think, Catherine, you want, should we show it? Yeah, let's show it. Okay, Carla, let's put on the second one. So I think you can see that we we really this is all student work by the way that you've just seen. So um, I hope you you get the picture that we really do we do what we say we do, which is really important. A lot you can everybody can have a great website or a lot of people can say you know our students are super creative and they do really fresh interesting things. But we we have all of that. But we also um, teach you what you need to know so that you can put your concepts so that you can put your your great ideas your creativity into real world projects um, and that's what you're what you've just been looking at so having said all of that i guess now we're open for questions i just want to mention one thing about uh the school of animation and visual effects uh we have a completely remote lab so you don't have to buy a, an expensive computer or anything like that. So it's 24 seven access from all over the world. You can access all of our machines and the software um, and all of the tools you need to create visual effects and animation. So that's a pretty big deal that, that you can, you know, maybe decide you don't feel like coming in to the physical labs that particular day and you want to work in a cafe maybe on your laptop or, or, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the most um, exciting things that I've been able to, to help build um, since I've been director, just having um, access to a lab 24 seven from wherever you happen to be. And Catherine, isn't this typical of what's happening in many studios right now? All studios and also pretty much in every industry, you know, we are mirroring the industry um, because most studios since the pandemic um, have have had to go remote and they've realized that there's a lots of advantages to that. You know, they have a larger talent pool. Um, so we're using the same software, same technology to log in to our labs as they are at Pixar, DreamWorks um, and other companies. It's the same exact so it, it's It mirrors the industry basically. So you learn how to work in a remote fashion as you would in the industry as well as being in person. So, and that that's so important. I can't emphasize that enough. Mm -hmm. um, you, we all know um, that since the pandemic, we've a lot of work has students have been working remotely, but and they may see that in some ways as a handicap. But actually, I think it's a benefit 
because that's what's happening in the real world. So yes. if you are in Mumbai or wherever you might be um, and you want to work for a, a company in a different country, you know how to do it. You've been doing it uh, the whole time you've been at the academy. You've used Catherine's R Lab. You know how to meet deadlines and do projects and submit work. So um, it's more training. It's more training for the real world. That's what we're all about is just getting you ready to go right into the job and be productive and feel like this isn't, this actually feels like when I was in school, like this is this, uh, I often hear this from my students who work in the industry. They'll say, I walked in and I was really scared at first, but then I realized that I, I had the right training and I feel comfortable here. So that's like music to my ears. Perfect. Yeah. So Carla, do we have questions? Is there anything? Um... Oh my God, wait a little. I think my microphone is not working right. I'll be right back. One of the things I, while Carla is getting her microphone working, um, I want to just talk about briefly, and it always comes up, parents especially, but people say, well, you know, maybe you should go to a different school and then you can always have a hobby in art and design or, you know, you can do it later on and you've got go get a real job, get a real career, and then you can see how this art thing goes. We we don't really agree with that. And we don't, we have not seen this idea of starving artists. We see thriving artists. Um, and there's a big difference there. I know if you're into art and design, whatever your focus is, whether it's like Catherine and animation and visual effects, or maybe it's photography, or maybe it's painting, I don't know. Um, that's your passion. That's what speaks to your heart, to your soul. And we think that if, you have that connection with some kind of specific visual art. That's what you should be doing. And we will make sure that you get to a point with it where you can do it for a living, where you can make, um, you go to work and you're doing something you love. That's the point of all this. Um, I think of all the thousands of, of television series that are streaming right now that have design work, UI work, visual effects, um, like Marvel films, uh, animation, like Pixar films. Think of all the content that is out there. It's all art. It's all content creation. And there's a lot of it. I mean, it, it's it's one of the biggest industries in the world. So it's, it is tangible. It's, it's actually within your reach to work in the industry that you love. And I think the other thing I just want to add is, you know, this idea of the starving artist, we all kind of have this image of somebody over in the corner working alone, you know, just kind of in this dark space. And actually, that's not the way it works. Um, if you are a thriving artist, you're going to be collaborating, you're going to be bouncing ideas off other people. Um, it's going to be a lot of energy and a lot of, of uh, sharing ideas and working together as a team. And we're going to teach you how to do that as well. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. My microphone is working now, luckily. Um, that is very inspiring. And I think that um, most of the people who are into the arts have gone through that. So this is, this is very, very good to see that is actually doable. It's awesome. Um, here, someone is asking about the admission process. So how do they start with that? I think. Well, that's a, so we have that little how to apply slide up there in the corner. Um, uh, they can, they can click on that link and go to the, uh, Academy of Art website, or they can call that number. Um, as an international student, we have a whole team of admissions people who are there, uh, just for them. You can ask that the admissions rep call you back. You don't have to pay for this call. Um, we'll, we'll cover all of that and we'll take you through the whole process uh, from everything you need to submit to show us what maybe you've done something in the past. Maybe, maybe you haven't, uh, but <clears throat> wherever you at, wherever you are at, we'll make sure you're not bored, number one, 
or number two, you're not in classes that are too advanced for you. So we'll find we'll find the exact right space for you. Uh, for example, e even in our foundations classes, if you've never, say you've never drawn before, but you have this dream of being a painter, I don't know, um, we're going to show you how to, in that first class, we're going to show you the right way to sharpen that charcoal pencil. We're going to show you how to figure out what horse you should sit on and how to put your your paper up on the in front of you and we're gonna there's no we'll we'll go to the very beginning if that's where you need to to be uh, in the united states a lot of students don't have the opportunity to take professional art and design classes it's been cut in a lot of our high schools grade schools junior high schools so we know that a lot of our students come to us they they just love to doodle for example and, and they love to watch animations or they you know they play games and they're totally turned on to that so um we're going to meet you wherever you are and take you through the whole process awesome thank you so much sue um i know this varies from program to program but maybe just like um an overview what is the criteria for applying you just, first of all, let us know you're interested. <laughs> that's, that's a, you know, you've taken the first step by being here. But if you just come to us and say, I'm interested, I saw this webinar. I know, Carla, you've collected some of the information as well. Mm -hmm. um, we will reach out to you. You can reach out to us. And like I said, we have a whole team of people who will answer your questions, help you get uh, registered. And uh, we make our our enrollment process as simple as possible. We know a lot of artists don't like the tedious filling out of paperwork and a lot of people don't like taking those awful exams that some people you have to take. So we try to make it as simple as possible for you and as straightforward. But like I said, we have a whole team of people to help you. That is great. Thank you so, so much. Um, here, someone is asking, um, if I don't have an arts background, can I still study a master here? Yes, you can. Um, and I, I go right back to parents. I'm not saying that everybody has parents who tell them they shouldn't go to art school and art and design, but many, many young people have gotten their first degree, their bachelor's degree, because their parents thought it was a good idea and they want to come back <laughs> And they want to do something in art and design, um, and they've decided, okay, now it's my turn. I'm going to get, I'm going to come get my master's. So we have MAs, which are shorter; they're uh, 36 units, and then we have our MFA, which is the equivalent of a PhD in more academic subjects. So the MFA, you do, a, you end up with a, a project, a signature project that you have put, helped put together. Um, and that is what makes the difference. You spend the last half of your time, you take the same studio classes that you would take for the MA, but then at the end, you're working on your special signature project. Um, and then you present it, like Catherine may have a group of people with her MFA program, they look at the work, they hear what the student, wants to do and then they look at the final work and decide if it's at the high level it needs to be but in the in the world actually the MFA is considered the creme de la creme it's that thing that um, you know like a, like I said a PhD if you have an MFA you are considered a uh, highly skilled person in whatever area that's in that is great thank you so so much and yes, uh, I, I, I can relate to that. And I think many students that are into the arts can relate to that. So that is awesome to, to finally do what you really want to do. So it is I, have, I want to ask Catherine, um, Catherine, what made you decide you wanted to go into visual effects? Oh, boy. Um, well, I, I actually was doing more admin work and I ended up interviewing at Industrial Light and Magic and I got a job as an admin. And then I realized um, that I was much more interested in 
the content creation part of it and in, in, in being a part of the work of the shots. So um, I decided to, to train on my own, which is, wow. I mean, if I had had a school I could go to, that would have been so amazing because um, I made a lot of my mistakes, you know, sort of in the <laughs> beginning. Um, but I, I survived. I made it. But but it, it was um, a little bit of a, a harder um, journey, I would say. But then I got my first um, uh, creative gig on The Mask, the movie The Mask, which I'm and I, um, you know, and I started to work on more feature films doing compositing, which is basically taking all the, the elements, uh, the computer generated elements, everything and put them together in one environment. And sort of it's at like the end of the pipeline. And I realized how much of a passion I had. And I just kind of hit the ground running. And that, that's it's I think what happens is you have to have a spark. Something has to cause, you know, a spark inside of you that tells you I could spend all day doing this and more and this is actually fun and exciting and challenging and I'm learning every day um this is for me and that's kind of the spark we try to get when you come um and you may not be a hundred percent sure um generally people find out there are a lot more diff there are a lot of different areas that you can go into like you know for me I like to work you know, I was able to work on Star Wars and, and, you know, I wanted to work on live action and do visual effects. And then again, across the Bay, we have Pixar. If you're interested in 3d animated films and you decide that's where you want to go, you just get the spark that goes off that tells you, this is what I want to do. And when you get that, it's, it's very exciting. And then you, you just hit the ground running it's a lot easier to get great at something that you love. Mm -hmm. And I found yes. that I loved compositing. And then I put all of my efforts into to learning it and doing that work. And the thing that's so much better now is that, you know, with our school, we can tell you which mis what mistakes we made. We can help you um, go into the job at a higher level and, and be able to get the next gig and the next gig. And, and, you know, that's, you know, the idea is, is that you have a passion for what you're doing. And, um, and we have so many different areas of art yes. uh, to choose from. Oh my God. Thank you so much for sharing, Catherine. You're welcome. I have here another question that I think that you already answered, but just in case someone missed it. Um, if you have any online programs. Right. So we do. And, and uh, I'll, I know Catherine will want to talk more about this, but um, in 2000, we realized that online classes were needed. Um, not everyone could pick up and move to San Francisco and not everybody, not just because of, of, finances, but it might be because they have other responsibilities, families, um, you know, they, they just couldn't leave for a while and go do this thing. We looked all over and we could not find an online program that we were happy with. I mean, after all, we're the visual arts, right? We talk about professional uh, careers and we were looking at work that we didn't think looked like that. So we decided we had to build our own. Um, and it was a very expensive and very long process. All our classes that we have created are um, written by instructors that teach at the school. We have the same, the demos, everything come from the Academy of Art. Um, if so if, right, now we have all our classes are online and we're constantly upgrading them. Um, and they're pretty amazing, actually. If, you, you, if you're interested um, in doing online programs, I, I'll just tell you one quick story. There was, in fashion design, there was a young man who put, a, 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 he wanted to be a fashion designer. That's what he did. He lived in Pakistan. He could not come to the United States. He couldn't get a visa mm -hmm. to come. So he did it all online. His work was so good that we, 
ask him if we could show it in the New York fashion show that happens in the fall. And he was thrilled, of course, and, and wanted to get a tourist visa to come in so he could see his work being shown at the New York fashion show, and he couldn't get the visa. So he watched it online, but he never came. He never came to the school, but his work was being shown in New York City, and he learned it all online. So I, that's just an example of um, we, we feel confident that if you can't come to San Francisco, our online uh, classes will get you the same opportunities as if you were on site. Now, Catherine's talked about her R lab. I know she's very proud of it. And, uh, and the idea is you can be anywhere and take classes, but go ahead, Catherine, tell them how it works. Um, well, again, we wanted to mirror the industry. And um, even before the pandemic hit, we were, um, zooming people in to classes and um so now we we've been teaching virtual classes as well so um we have people logging into our classes from all over the world and they also have access to our lab resources um and the you know industry standard software and industry standard computing power of a studio so that's something that is exciting that you can just take your old laptop and use it as a window into you're you're basically catapulted into our lab, um, into our uh, resources, and working and mirroring the industry uh, just like they are. So again, just having twenty four seven access to computing power. We also have something called a render farm because in moving pictures and anima animation, we have to render a lot of frames. So we have um, and say what render means, because maybe somebody yeah. doesn't know what that means. <laughs> Basically, turn it into a 2D image so it could be projected in film or television. So all of the three dimensional uh, computer generated images, the map paintings, um, the uh, live action, if there is that all has to be put together. And it takes a lot of computing power to basically finalize that for um, mainstream media. So we basically have what, what we call a render farm. So you can actually complete your work on 20 machines, send it off, go to bed. And then when you get back in the morning, all of your work is ready to be shown. And um, again, that's very similar to how a studio works. They all have render farms as well. And it means that you have access to our labs and you have access to multi-machine processing. So, you know, all of these thousands of frames that you might be rendering to, um, to want to be able to show can be done, you know, in a matter of hours than in days or minutes than hours. It's just, um, you know, you just can't get this at home. And this is exactly what we're talking about here is we're teaching you how to use the same equipment you'd be using in the studios that you might be working in. Um, and you can do it remotely. Um, and the, I think the only, I mean, I don't know if she said this, I know she said you Chromebook, but all it really you have to have is a big screen so that you can see your work. So you can really get the detail down. Um, yeah. We recommend that you have a good monitor and a mouse and a keyboard um, uh, that you can hook up to your laptop or whatever, but really the, the, the computer it doesn't have to be expensive. It, it's really a window into our lab. And, and Catherine, I, I don't know if you know, when we first started animation, Catherine wasn't working here at the time. She was probably a child. Um, we had- Working in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, when the computer first started uh, up for animation, we had these things that were called Indigo. And Indigos were these big, big, tall computers and they cost like $100,000 each. Oh my god! And we had like four or five of them, and, and that's what we used in the industry. I had the same computer at ILM at, at Lucasfilm. And yeah. people, you couldn't act. You know, who can afford? You can't buy that, right? But I remember uh, one spring, I had some students from another art school, which I won't mention their name, but uh, they came. They were on spring break in San Francisco, and they wanted to go have their pictures taken beside these indigos. <laughs> 
And we, you know, and I just tell that story because it's all changed so much. And, and now you don't have to have all, you don't have to have an indigo. You don't have to pay a hundred thousand dollars. But I think it's also a statement about the Academy always having been a little bit ahead of everybody else. Um, and, um, and we're proud of that. Mm -hmm. That is so great. That is a great story. So thank you so much. Um, the last question that we have here is if you offer any kind of scholarships. So that's a good question. We have different scholarships. We have a whole, uh, if you go to our website, you'll see scholarships, grants and scholarships, I think it's called. Um, and it changes all the time. So um, if you, we do offer um, different things. And, and the other thing is if, if you, um, once you come to the academy, if you do well, we, we also have these internships. We touched on it before. And that's a way international students can actually work while they are in school. Um, and then, of course, we have the STEM, which allows you to work for three years in the United States afterwards. So there are, there are ways to, to make money for international students. We also have some um, working on campus that um, you have access to. Your international admissions person can help you, again, uh, understand all of that and tell you what's available um, and help you make sure you don't miss out on anything when it comes to scholarships or grants. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess we have reached the end of this live session. Um, okay. I will put this whole screen again so you guys can take a screenshot of that or just a picture from your phone so you can save that information for later and also please open all the links um, so you can save them in your devices and you can check them out later but I will I would want to thank everyone for being here with us for sharing a little bit of your afternoons and I really hope that you have enjoyed this session and that it has been like beneficial and inspiring for you to pursue your dream and I would also like to thank Trisha and Joe for being back backstage answering all the questions thank you so much guys and also to our amazing presenters Sue and Catherine Thank you so much for sharing with us all this information and stories. Uh, uh, I'm sure that the students were super happy to have you. Well, I hope they come uh, come be part of the family. Um, it's it, forever growing and uh, we need you. So come on, come on down. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone. And see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.